Sit down at Publix down there and catch them all the time. Vietnam vets, World War II vets, Korea. Um, but yeah, I didn't know they was doing all them changes you was talking about. Yeah, they moved everything to to, to uh, Fort Benning. Uh, I was in uh, it was in the Stars and Stripes in Germany when I read it, and I could see why. I could see why because it, I know when I went there. Oh my God, I didn't. I just like. Did I really want to do this? I said, but you know what? I, I'm that kind of a person. I say, I decided, whatever it takes, I'm going to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. And I love on the uh, on the jump towers that we have, something that's always stuck with me. It's a big sign for all us legs at yeah. the time. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. And that stuck with me. Hey, Patsy. Hey. That's. Oh, no, 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 I got you. I got you. I got you. That, that stuck with me to this day. Mm -hmm. And anything I've ever been through in my life, I don't quit. And we make a decision. I'm going to follow it through. Do what I got to do. If it don't work, I did the best I could. Yeah. And that's the motto of the airborne guys. In a sense, once they get past that that litmus test and they get their wings. That's our attitude about everything. And you know, and it's, it's everything is free decor. I mean, from my perspective, I've, I've, I've seen what you're talking about, and I, you know, and what we derive, everybody that didn't have wings, oh, your leg, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't swim, you can't do nothing. It's all just a, a, a thing. It's not insult to anybody, because we're all the same mm -hmm. military, we're all Americans, we all work together, and that's the way it should mm -hmm. be. But you know, within ourselves, like 101st, they have the, uh, the eagle. Yeah. Okay. Well, we would call them the puking buzzards. They would call us because we're all American. Seems like the hunt first is more well better known or something. But then the 88 is right behind. It's the way I see it. You know, I don't know, but I look at a lot of history and stuff. And and um, who was in the hunt first? Is I. Wait a minute. That band of brothers, were they hunt, hunting first? They were in a airborne out. Well, there's a kind of a, well, in, in the respect of whatever, whether it be 82nd or 101st, they were a band of brothers. Yeah. You can't take that away. Yeah. But the, the, the mix that I think people get into with discussing things like that, is that when they were going that you ever saw a movie a bridge too far? Yeah. Where they uh, uh, they decided. Yeah, the bridge. I remember that. Uh, they I were doing that thing to try to cut the wood down. They, they did invasion after they, uh, drop after drop after drop, yeah. trying to get these different bridges at Nijmegen, other places at Arnhem. Now, yeah. Now wait a minute. What the the, the let's see uh, a bridge too far? Okay, I'm thinking the Market Garden. That That's was, it. That yeah, was Operation it. Operation Market Garden. Yeah. Correct. And, and, and they made the movie based on that. They called it yeah. a, bridge, a Bridge Too Far. Yeah. Well, the 101st and the 82nd both were in that. The 101st uh, jumped in one area, the 82nd jumped in another. And and, and so, the, but at, and in D-Day, it was 101st in one segment and the 82nd in another. In, uh, I think in Africa, in Tunisia, I think they, there was one jump made I can't remember, I, 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 the first 505 rings to mind, but there was a jump, one or, one or two jumps made in Tunisia or in Africa when they had the desert war going on there. And I don't know if that was the 82nd or 101st. Bottom line is that, you know, we, we knock each other down. Yeah. No. We, 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 they, we, they called us a, a, a royal assholes. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a American assholes. <laughs> and, we, and we call them puking buzzers. I mean, in my time. It was other things that we said to each other, and then we had an exercise against each other in, in North and South Carolina in '61 or '62. We called Swift Strike One, and boy, we were at each other's. We were all over each other. I mean, God forbid you got caught by the other guys. The stuff they took off you. Mm -hmm. They make you run down streets. 
crazy things that went on. But anyway, the bottom line is that in the, in this, in the sphere of the whole thing, it's like a brother and a sister. How often do you fight with your sister? Mm -hmm. God forbid anybody outside comes and fights with you. She's going to be there taking yeah. her back. And, and, and vice versa. If somebody tries to you know, play monkey games with her, where are you going to be? You know, but you can, you can curse each other out. You yeah. can yell and scream what you want. I hate you. I this and that. But when it comes to the bottom line, she's your sister, you're her brother. Same thing. With the 82nd, did the 101st, he's my brother. So for me, when they say band of brothers, that's what I look at. Yeah, but now, 82nd's not at Fort Bragg anymore? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're still there? Yeah, yeah. And here's something that you may not know. I didn't know. A few years ago, I was over here in Ocala at uh, Home Depot, and at Home Depot Lowe's, and all of a sudden, I, I see this young strapping guy walk over to me, and shakes my hand because he saw my hand. He says, thank you for your service to your country. I said, well, thank you, but I can tell that you're military too, even though you're not in uniform. Howdy. Are they open yet or? Hmm? Are they open yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Yep. Won't work unless you're off the mat. You can just open it. Yeah. There you go. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what are we talking about here? I lost my child. Yeah, right, oh, I'll do that too. I know I was at Bragg for about two and a half months. I, from Basic in Jackson, I went to Bragg after my leave and went to Bragg. And we had our. Uh, Advanced infantry training uh, No, I was in artillery. Oh, okay. 28. Okay. And um, after we had all that training at 28, the, the whole outfit drove over to. We draw out over to Germany and that, and I think they've dissolved the 28th now. Oh, that's I, what I was thinking. I'm sorry. You, when you just said that, it hit me back. This guy had a shirt on that had like, it looked like a glider wing, but would have a, a paratrooper mm -hmm. wings out and something in the middle that I couldn't figure out. And we were talking. So I see, so he says, I went, I went, I was, I'm with the 101st. He's still in, right? And I said, oh, 101st Airborne. He says, no. I said, what? 101st Airborne. No. What do you mean, no? Oh, you don't know what happened? I said, no, what happened? You know how they transition different things, they do many changes just to justify the generals at the top. They converted the 101st Airborne to Airborne Assault. They're not, they're not, they're no longer classified as an Airborne Paratrooper branch of the Army. They are classified as the uh, 101st Airborne Assault Group. We are the only ones still active that are airborne, airborne. Why they did that, who, why they picked us against them, I don't know. But it just didn't seem to me, I mean, what, what are they doing? I said, you need well, to what, you, yeah, They do strange stuff, you I'm know, like, you. let me show you my, I'm gonna give you one of my cards anyway. Oh, uh, they, they bring, that I was at, I was um, E5, but I was a specialist. And they, the, the way it was explained to me that a non-com, which is like a corporal sergeant, so on, they're in charge of the guys. They're a specialist. He's not in charge of anything but his job, what he does. Well, and I, now they've done away with the specialist rank, so I don't know. No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, that's what I heard yeah. anyway. Well, I can tell you this: when I was in Bragg, I, when I went to Germany, I was a PFC. A year later, I was still a PFC because I found out that in Germany, ranks were frozen. Yep. Bad luck for me that I got there when I did. Okay, yep. at Bragg. It was running rampant. I had guys that had half the time in the army with me when I was there, came overseas to Germany as an E5. E5, I'm still a PFC. It wasn't until six months before I, 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 I got discharged that they finally had a rank in our company, which was a specialist, to fill us an E4 slot. It was corporal or specialist, right? But I don't know about today, you may be right, but I know that then, even that, 
I was a, a, a squad leader. Yeah. I did what any corporal would do. I had the equal rank. The specialist or corporal made no difference. I was in charge. I had my guys, and there was nothing like. I know how you. Uh, I, I used to think that specialist, you would train like as an engineer or a mechanic or a, a truck driver, or something along those lines. Yeah. That you needed to, like you said, you got to be specialist too. Yeah, I was. I but was like. Uh, my MOS was, uh, I was like, uh, ammo, they call it ammo special, small arms, but I, I worked, I worked the arms room, and, uh, but I didn't get the E5 till after I left Germany. You came back to the States? Came back to the States, then I got E5. Well, that's, you know, that, that's something I could tell you that I know, it was, it was a shock to me that they told the 101st that they're no longer airborne, airborne, that they're airborne assault. Oh, I sure forward. didn't know that. And it's funny you mentioned Fort Jackson because the only accident I ever had, I got it there. Uh, they had a class of advanced infantry trainees just graduated. Yeah. And they wanted to see if by doing an exercise. Thank you so much. They yeah, that's right. Uh, the airborne's automatically infantry, right? It is infantry. It's just that you're, 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 you're jumping into a zone area behind the lines normally, yeah. and then you're working your way around like a regular infantryman. Yeah, in that respect, yeah. But you're not you're not coming uh, on, a, uh, on an assault in, in, in a division or anything like that. Here's the enemy. You're on this side, and you're moving that way to get them out of town. So you can, no, we go behind, and we try to block. Our job was always was to interdict and block and, and prevent supplies, support, and infantry, whatever, from getting to where our guys are coming across or coming in. That's how it ended up in D-Day. But that's, that, that's the gist of it. We, we, jump, we don't jump in, into areas that are not occupied, but we try to get into an area where we can try to get there safely enough without too many guys getting killed and then take over from there and block roads and do whatever we got to do. That, that's basically, and I like that. Yeah. I enjoy that kind of, to me like like a little guerrilla warfare. You ain't gonna know them there until they put a bullet in your head. And yeah. I like that kind of approach. I don't like that they got binoculars out there and you know, and they know there's an army coming and they know what roads they're gonna take and, and they have preordained artillery uh, drop points, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. barrages. No, with us, they don't know. Once we're there, now they gotta scramble and they gotta do what they gotta do. Sometimes we get unlucky. I mean, one uh, one group one one group of the guys that jumped into uh, on them, the Poles they they got slaughtered. Yeah. Because uh, when they went into that thing, they were trying to support the to get it over to that bridge to help them out. They got thrown so far out, and oh, I've heard so many things about that. It, it, it was sad because the Germans knew they were coming. Yeah. Now you're talking about D-Day and uh, no, 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 no. Now this is this is after B-Day. Yeah, uh, Arnhem, uh, a bridge too far. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Market Garden. Market yeah. Garden. Right. Uh, and, and, and that 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 turned out to be one humongous major disaster. I mean, considering all the sacrifice that was made, it, it was bad. It was so bad. And by the time mm -hmm. they got all done, uh, I forget how many went in. Uh, they jumped into on them directly. Uh, I think it was like 150,000 of them or something. Maybe 10,000 was able to survive. Mm -hmm. Be that, besides getting killed and taken prisoner and wounded, maybe 10,000, if that, was able to cross back across the river to get back to our side. It was a major disaster. Mm -hmm. Major. Major, major, major. Oh, yeah, Bastogne was a hellhole too, boy. That, oh. they, I, they got sent into a system. They wasn't even equipped. No, they had no winter equipment, no nothing. That was supposed to be a rest area. Yeah. Because it was so quiet on that front, but Hitler decided, okay, I got one more shot. I got one more stab at him if I can do this. And, and thank God it didn't work, but we lost over 11, 12,000 guys in that battle. I mean, it was, it was, it was, you know, when, it, we, when that guy comes out and says, you want to surrender? We said, nuts. And they're saying, the Germans were puzzled. What does he mean by nuts? He said, they don't understand New York slang. I said, like, mm. you take something to me and it says, well, you're going to do this or, or, or you're not going to do it. And I look at you and I say, nuts. You know what I mean by nuts. Yeah. 
I said, you're going to have to fall me over because I ain't doing what you want. That kind of thing. So, anyway, it was, it was, it was, I read, I've read so much history of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't look at it as much as I, well, I still, see, what am I talking about? I was looking at something this morning at four o'clock, <laughs> and it was, I forget now what it was, but it was some World War II stuff. Um, but I'm kind of, uh, World War II, some of the best friends that I have are German. And I'm friend, there's two German nationals that live within about two blocks from me. Uh, this guy, his dad was a World War II German soldier that was captured by the Russians. And the Russians kept him to 19... 52, 53 is when they released him, yeah. and it, that's the same year that he he em, took his family and emigrated to the states. Uh, they had a hundred and it was like a hundred and forty-five, hundred fifty thousand prisoners of war from the Sixth Army that Paulus when he surrendered. Mm -hmm. Of that number, only five thousand repatriated back to Germany. Yeah. The rest were on the way. It's it's like the Bataan Death March with the Japanese, with yeah. the guys in uh, in in uh, off Corregidor, and you know, yeah. it's just amazing. I, I I see a point because when I went to Germany in '62, I'm saying to myself, knowing the history, because I'm very deep into that with war. You went to Germany in '62? Yeah. I left Germany in 63. 63? Well, I, what, when in 63? Hmm? When did you leave in 63? Seemed like it was about October, something like that. You, you got out a month before me. Really? Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Hey, are y'all going in here? Yes, sir. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I, I, but the thing that struck me was, it's amazing to me how the life cycle goes. 